In this video, we're going to talk about naming ionic compounds. So let's first just do a quick review of what an ionic compound is. Now there's a video linked in the description with a more detailed description of ionic compounds and how ions form. We'll just look at a quick example of uh, what these might look like. And so an ionic compound forms when a metal, and that's these elements over here on the left side of the periodic table, are going to bond to a nonmetal. And so for example, we could have a beryllium atom that forms an ion, and since it's in group two, the beryllium atom is going to turn into a beryllium with a two plus charge. That can form a compound with an oxygen atom, and since oxygen is in group six, it's going to form an ion with a two minus charge. Now when the compound forms, these are going to come together and balance out their charges and form the beryllium oxide compound. And so in this video, we're going to first learn how to name binary ionic compounds, which are very simple compounds composed of two elements. And then we'll look at compounds that form with polyatomic ions. So let's start with those binary ionic compounds. Now binary means two things. And so these are elements that are formed when two things come together and form a compound. And these are some examples. We have sodium chloride, two different elements, sodium and chloride. Over here we have potassium oxide. There's actually two potassiums in order to balance out that oxygen. We'll learn why that is in this video, but there's still only two different elements. And then we have calcium chloride. Once again, we need two of one of those elements to form this compound, but there's just two different elements here making up that compound. So let's see how we go about coming up with these names over here on this side. There's some steps that we can follow. These are pretty simple. First, we're going to write the name of the cation, and the cation is the element with the positive charge, and that's generally going to be the metal, and it's the one that's going to come first in the formula. And then we write the name of the anion, that's the one with the negative charge, that's the thing that comes second in the formula, and we're going to change its ending to ide. So let's look at an example. So here we have a simple example where we have two elements coming together to form a compound, and you may recognize these as being aluminum and oxygen, and if you don't, you can just check your periodic table. So we could see aluminum right here and oxygen right here, and so let's go ahead and follow the steps so we can come up with the name of this compound. So first, write the name of the cation, that's the one that comes first, so we have aluminum, and then we write the name of the anion, that's the one that comes second, and we have oxygen, and then what we have to go uh, do is we have to change the ending, and so I'm going to actually go ahead and erase the ending of this to oxide. And so following that second step, we always change the ending to ide, and so we come up with aluminum oxide as the name. Let's look at one more example. Here's another one with oxygen once again, and in this case we have the metal calcium. And so once again we're going to write down the name of the cation, which is calcium. And then we change the ending of the anion to end in IDE, and we end up with calcium oxide. Now those are pretty simple. So let's look at some examples with polyatomic ions. The word polyatomic, many atom ions, and so these are going to be ions that are composed of more than one element and that also carry a charge. So for example, when carbon and three oxygens combine together, we can form the carbonate ion ion, and that has a two minus charge, and this is called carbonate. Now, if you're in a chemistry class, you most likely are given a chart of polyatomic ions. You may have to memorize them, uh, but in this video, we're just going to use the formula that matched the name, and we'll use this chart here of some of the more common polyatomic ions. And so let's look at how we would go about naming these types of compounds. The steps are almost the exact same as if we just had binary compounds, um, but in this case we don't do anything to the name of the anion, we just leave it the exact way it's written. So we write the name of the cation, then we write the name of the anion. These are actually probably the easiest ones to go about naming. So here's an example where we have a whole bunch of things going on, and part of the uh, ch challenge here is recognizing that these are actually polyatomic ions, and so you have to get pretty familiar with the chart of polyatomic ions, so you can see NH4 and know what that is and then NO3. Now you may not have to remember the name exactly, but know that they're on that chart. So let's find these uh, on here and then we'll go ahead and name this compound. So NH4 is right here, that's NH4 plus, and then NO3 
3 is right here, that's NO3 minus, and so we have nitrate and we have ammonium. And so again, these are really simple to name because once we found those on the chart, all we do is write the name of the cation, and so that is ammonium in this case, and then we write the name of the anion, and then that is the name of the chemical compound. And let's look at one more example. We have aluminum there, and then we have SO4. And so we probably recognize aluminum from the periodic table, but SO4, again, we have to recognize that that is found on our list of polyatomic ions. Again, you may have to memorize these for your chemistry class. Now you'll see all of these other numbers here. We're gonna to get to that in a minute, why those are there, but that's to balance out the charges of these ions. What we have to do is find this polyatomic ion on our list, and we could see that it is right here, that SO4 with a two minus, and that's called sulfate. And so we can go ahead and write the name of the cation, and that is aluminum. And then we can write the name of the anion, which is sulfate. And so there is the name of that chemical compound. So in this video, we learned how to name binary ionic compounds, and we learned how to name compounds with polyatomic ions. You can support the Science Classroom by subscribing to this channel and liking the video. You can also support us on Patreon by clicking the link in the video or the description.